Hi, this is Nick Courage. I'm the author of Stormblown and Snowstruck, and today I'll be reading a short excerpt from Stormblown, my last book. I don't usually read a lot of excerpts when I visit schools or I do bookstore events because when I write and revise, I'll usually read every sentence and paragraph and chapter out loud to myself. So by the time I've finished a book, I've probably read it out loud over a thousand times. And by that point, I'm usually ready to hear somebody else talk for a while. The section that I'm reading today is set in Audubon Park in New Orleans, and it's about one of my main characters, Emily, wading across this dirty lagoon to get to a tiny island that's a rookery, which means that it's full of birds. Fun fact, there is a park called Audubon Park in New Orleans. There is a lagoon in that park, and in that lagoon, there is a tiny island called Oshner Island or Bird Island, which is a rookery. And as a kid, I was obsessed with the idea of wading across this lagoon to get to that tiny island and camp out on it. Emily waded slowly but confidently into the water, angling her phone for a selfie as her feet settled into the thick muck at the bottom of the lagoon. She took short, exploratory steps, trying not to slip while she snapped pictures of her crossing for Elliot. But every few feet, the mud gave way to something hard and unyielding, a rock or a log or a pipe. She had to concentrate to keep her footing. Her photos could wait, she finally decided, holding her phone and book high above her head. It was slow going, but the more Emily focused, the more the city seemed to fade into a quiet buzz at the back of her head, like a gnat or a fly. Don't fall, she whispered under her breath over and over again as she inched closer and closer to the tiny island. Don't fall. The water was cool, cold even, but even at its deepest, it barely reached the bottoms of her frayed jean shorts. Algae swirled around her knees and water beetles paddled wildly in her wake but Emily didn't pay them any attention. She just breathed slowly, in and out, as she made her way across the lagoon, wishing her brother could be there to see her, lost in thought. It was only when the wood ducks blinked their orange eyes and dove, disappearing beneath widening ripples that her concentration broke. By the time their shiny green heads were surfaced, the buzz of the park in the back of Emily's head had grown into a shout. What if somebody sees me? She thought, her heart pounding in her chest, the asphalt path that looped around the park hugged the banks of the narrow lagoon close enough that she'd be visible to any passers-by, and Emily had never seen anyone in the water before. It was so dirty that swimming was against the rules. If anyone bothered to look, she'd stand out like, like I'm knee-deep in this filthy lagoon. Halfway to the island with nowhere to hide, Emily splashed quickly to its shore. The slippery roots knotted into its muddy banks wouldn't have been a problem if she'd taken her time. The far side of the island, where field scientists sometimes docked their canoes, had more of a beach, and the island was so small, just two or three times the size of their apartment. If Emily had stopped to think about it, she could have traced the shoreline, stepping onto the sand and out of sight without too much trouble. She could have played it cool. Instead, Emily felt as if the entire world were staring at her, and one goose in particular. While Emily scrambled in the slick gray clay, he honked his displeasure and nipped at her hair. Emily barely had time to scream before she lost her footing and stumbled backward into the muck. As she fell, she threw her book haphazardly to shore. It landed safely in a tangle of reeds, but her phone wasn't so lucky. Emily clutched it to her chest as she paddled through the shallows, panicking as she pulled herself up onto the clay. Please, she said, wiping a strand of algae from its screen with the hem of her shirt. Work. She held her breath as she stared into her smudged reflection, but the screen was dark and water dribbled from the headphone jack. Emily sighed as she shook her phone dry. There was nothing to do but wait. The island was a rookery, which meant it was full of nests. Emily knew that, but she hadn't really understood what it meant until she'd climbed soddenly ashore, constellations of slimy duckweed clinging to her skin. The birds had scattered at first, feathers literally flying, and it wasn't until they returned shrieking and nipping at her legs and fingers that Emily realized what she'd gotten herself into. Soaked from her fall, she found the first tree with a Y-shaped branch that she could reach and climbed it, not stopping until she was sitting as still as possible in the crook of its low slung limbs, barely daring to breathe. The trunk was stained white with droppings, and even though Emily was alone on the island, alone and surrounded by a thousand shrieking birds, she could hear her mother sighing as if she were right there with her, frowning at the fresh scratches on Emily's legs and at her soaking wet shorts. One by one, the birds settled back into the island, all except for one old Canada goose with a crooked wing, the one that had tried to eat her hair.